Hello, Michael. My name is Layla, and I'm the speech language pathologist that will be assessing you today. We're going to start off today by reviewing some of your case history and asking you some interview questions just to elaborate a little further on some of the things that I, um, I was looking over. Uh, our session today should take about 20 minutes in total, and at the, um, through the session we will be doing the interview, the oral facial examination, and then we will be doing three uh, brief assessments that I'll have you fill out to give me a better understanding of where you are at with your fluency disorder. So Michael, uh, I'm going to be asking you a few interview questions based off of your case history. And the first question I wanted to ask you was, uh, what is your primary concern regarding um, your speech? Well, I mean, it's, it, it's a concern. I, I, it really was my wife's concern to begin with because I oh, didn't think oh, there was a... Just slow down a little bit there. What's that? Go, give one more time for me. Yeah, so my, my wife, we would have... <laughs> We'd be, we'd get a lot of arguments over this, and it sounds silly, but she would, she would say that I uh, talk, talk too fast, and that I don't let her speak, and that I'm constantly like bombarding the conversation oh. like, so fast. Uh -huh. And then I'm like confused, I'm like, no, honey, I'm talking just fine, I don't know. And then so, so what happened was she recorded it, and well, I looked at myself, and I thought I spoke like Obama, but it turns out I don't. It's oh. not the same, so I need help. Oh, okay. Michael, thank you for that information. I want to ask you uh, to go ahead and describe, just a little bit more elaborate for me, um, the details of the problem. Well, the thing is, my problem seems to only be with my family um, oh. and like my, my mom, my grandma, my close friends, my wife, but at work, everybody seems to say I speak just fine. Hmm. But when I'm talking at home and, and, and I'm on the phone or you know, I'm talking to my wife, it's this constant, you know, I, and I get, sometimes I am a little tired at the, at the end of talking, and I realize sometimes I'm pushing out my breath really, you know, it's like, last little bit. So do you notice that your breath becomes a whisper towards the end of your com uh, sentence? Yeah, it's phrase? very faint, yeah, it starts okay. to, you know, it's like the last little push, I get that last the end of the conversation, okay. last okay. sentence, right? Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, how does your, how does your um, loudness of your voice, have you ever noticed that it's louder, uh, more, more so my wife is bringing it to my attention because she's like, what did you say? Uh, hold on, nobody gets <laughs> I mean, it's almost like she's making fun, but she's like saying like, well, I can't hear you though, actually, because you're not talking that loud. Oh, okay. So, so that, at that point, they're not even hearing you towards the end of your speech. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, so it seems like you're having a hurried um, rate of speech while you're speaking and that you're running out of air while you speak. Um, maybe that... Uh, something that you're, you're noticing more so with your family. Um, there could be reasons behind that, and we'll get into that just in a few more questions. Um, I have, so another question I wanted to ask you was, do you repeat words or, or parts of, um, or phrases? Like, would, would you say something like, um, I, 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 for instance, before you, when, you, when you're talking? Yeah, I don't know if I mentioned that before. Yeah, that was something I do. I, I, I do it sometimes, like, and also when I'm responding to people, well, like in the conversations, but I, I find myself saying I, I, as I'm thinking before I speak, but I'm saying I, I. Okay. But it just kind of comes automatically. I don't even think about it. It just happens. Yeah. And you've noticed that's something that occurs. It's I, in, is I, it frequent or is it in, is it not that very frequent? My wife tells me it's frequent. I've seen the video, so I'm like, okay, it exists. It's, yeah. It's okay. I, so it's yeah. enough to bring up. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. So Michael, I'm a, I want to find out a little bit more about when this started for you. Do you recall at all or a lot around when this began? Mm, you know, I think it came up in when I was 15. I took a comm class at high school and it, like my teacher went with my parents at like back to school and they were talking about this thing about my speeches and stuff and I, I need to slow down or something like that. And so that I remember was something that came up when I was in high school, 15 years old. So, Michael, um, I want to know, did, do you think uh, that your, flu your disfluency has changed over time? Do you believe that it got worse, did it improved, that it's stabilized? I think it, it, it's hard for me to think about it because I was unconscious to it for so long. But now that I'm aware of it, I, I realize that, uh, yeah, I think, I don't know if it's, it's, it's stopped. I'm trying, at least I know about it now. So Michael, tell me, does your stuttering vary um, over time or, or in situations? And if it does, how, how would you describe how it varies? 
I, I think it's mainly in, in formal talking when I'm speaking with my friends and family. Uh, but when I'm at school and I'm presenting in front of my coworkers, I'm, I, I feel like I do a great job. And everyone says I present very, very well. Oh. Michael, would you say that you avoid speaking to certain individuals? Uh, no, not really. Michael, could you describe to me the types of reactions that you've um, received from parents, friends, or teachers in the past toward your speech? It's like a game now, and I want it to stop. Oh. Everybody wants to point it out. Okay, I'm here now. Let's, I just want to make this go away. Let's, let's, the joke's over now. Okay, so would you say it's been negative then, the reactions? It's enough. It's, 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 it's a little irritating now. It's getting annoying. Why, why would you say it's irritating? What makes it well, irritating I'm for you? I'm trying to get my point across, and everyone's like, well, you, what are you, oh, you're doing it. And I'm like, wait, I'm just trying to talk. Oh, so, so you feel like you get interrupted a lot. Well, I mean, naturally, because I'm doing this thing that I've been saying that I'm doing, but I was like, at the same time, can I talk, you know? Yeah, so it's, it's frustrating. Yeah. I understand that. Um, another question about your, um, your, your issue that you're having with fluency. Um, compared to your typical conversational speech, the, the speech that you just share between people, uh, you know, friends and family, do you, do you notice that you stutter more while reading out loud um and if and if you do could you explain what's the situation uh you know i have a i have a two and a half year old and i read him books at night and these books are like nursery rhymes and i'm trying to i'm trying to i'm trying to match this and i <laughs> i have a hard time doing it but I, my wife goes in and she's like singing it's it's amazing <laughs> i don't know i have trouble doing that so i don't know if that's what you're asking but that's something i know so uh, michael have you ever received services from a speech language pathologist in the past if speech. I did, they were no good. So, so here I am. I don't know. So, no, you never did. Okay. Michael, um, I wanted to ask you, what are your current reasons for seeking help? Honestly, I really just want to be able to communicate with my family again and not have it be what it is. They want me to, to fix this. I see it as a thing. And if it makes them happier and I can communicate with them better, let's do it. So, Michael, what would you say that you would want to get out of therapy? Uh, yeah, I definitely want to develop skills to be aware, to identify when I'm doing these things, and then learn how to stop them. Okay. Michael, do you believe that you'll be able to complete tasks that I assign to you, like work maybe when you go home or, or practicing with family members? Oh, definitely, yeah. My mom taught me how to crochet, so if I can do that, I can do this. <laughs> I think I can do it. Okay, let's do it. Um, oral facial examination, and this is essentially a routine examination uh, that all of the clients of SLPs go through. It's, it's a type of assessment where I'm going to be looking to um, just see the general look of your facial structures, um, get an idea of the, um, the movement of your articulators, meaning your lips, your tongue. I want to see how your teeth look. And again, this is just very routine. Uh, it allows me to, um, to have a better idea of, of uh, maybe if there's another underlying issue that we need to look at that could be causing the, the speech problem. And um, also allows me to have an understanding of how you know your coordination is of your tongue and your the strength of your muscles. So it's just very routine. Uh, we're gonna... So we're going to start off by looking at your uh, just the fa your facial symmetry. So I just want you to sit and look at me and just allow me to take a moment to take uh, make an observation of your facial structures. Okay, um, now let's take a look at your lips. Um, can you go ahead and round and, or basically pucker your lips, so like a, like a duck. Okay. Is this a duck? Mm -hmm. Lips closed, thank you. Go ahead and um, smile for me and show me your teeth. Very good, okay. You're just to keep your head straight, thank you. Um, now, can you go ahead and alternate between a pucker and a smile? Very good. Um, now, would you, you can go ahead and stop. <laughs> and you can go ahead and, uh, can you open your mouth wide? Uh, okay. Um, can you do that one more time, just keep it open for a little longer? Okay, thank you. Um, can you close your lips tightly and puff up your cheeks for me? I'm going to just apply a little bit of pressure. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead and uh, bite down on your lower lip and make, make a f sound. Like oh. how you would make a f, like a f. Uh -huh. And now go ahead and say pa, pa, pa. Pa, pa, pa. 
Very good. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at your tongue. Um, we're gonna be just looking at, I'm um, gonna look at the surface and the appearance of your tongue to see how that, how that looks. Um, go ahead and stick out your tongue as far as you can. Okay. And uh, now can you go ahead and I'm gonna put, I want you to stick your tongue out and I'm gonna push against your tongue with this, uh, the blade, tongue blade. Go ahead and push against it. Okay. Um, go ahead and can you uh, el lift your tongue towards your, the tip of your nose? Oh. Okay, and bring your tongue towards your chin. Point it down, uh-huh. Um, now can you bring your tongue to the left? Stick it out to the left, now stick it out to the right. Very good. Um, can you alternate uh, your tongue from your left to your right side just cons consecutively? Go ahead, yes, yes, very good, very good, very, very good. Okay. Um, can you go ahead and put your tongue inside of your uh, cheek on the right side and push your cheek out with your tongue against? Go ahead, okay. And go ahead on this side. Okay. Um, now we're going to go ahead and move on to, um, I want to take a look at your teeth. So just go ahead and smile with me uh, so I can just see all of your teeth. Okay. okay. All right. Now, um, can you do me a favor and open up your mouth for me? Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, can you say ah for as long as you can? Uh, okay, very good. Um, oh, can you go? <laughs> Let me warm up. Let's, uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, go ahead and say ah, ah, ah. Ah, ah, ah. As forcefully as you can now, as, as loud as you can. Ah, ah, ah. As loud as I can? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Ah, ah, ah. And bigger, a little bit bigger so I can see the inside of your mouth. Okay. Ah, ah, ah. Very good, thank you. Uh, okay. Lots of sounds over here. Mm -hmm. I wonder okay, what we're Michael. Doing. Now uh, we're done with the oral facial examination. Thank you for that. Awesome. Thank you. Did I pass? Oh, did it? So now we're going to be moving on to our assessment protocols. And essentially, what this is going to be is three different types of assessment protocols that are going to all help me uh, to get a better uh, understanding of your flu your fluency or your disfluency rather. And um, the first one we're starting with is gonna be the stuttering variability. So essentially studying, stuttering variability is gonna be asking you questions that are going to assess how your, um, your stuttering or, your, uh, or maybe your disfluency differs across speaking situations. So how, how do you speak when you're um, talking to uh, your boss versus your family, like you mentioned a little bit earlier? Um, so in this assessment, you're basically gonna indicate if uh, you would typically speak fluently or uh, typically stutter in a, in a given situation. Um, and lastly, there is a box on the assessment form, on, on, the, on the form where you would um, check off whether or not you experience tension and anxiety in those situations. So it's gonna ask you if you, if you have the disfluency or if you don't, and then if you experience any kind of tension or anxiety. So um, this is gonna be really helpful for, for me um, to get that insight, so go ahead. All right, thank you so much for completing that for me, Michael. Um, we're just almost about done here. We have just a little, uh, two more uh, of these protocols left. Um, so in this next protocol, it's the Fluency Quality of Life Assessment Protocol. And essentially, um, in this assessment, I get a better understanding of um, how your uh, disfluency has affected your, your quality of life. Um, I, wanna, I want you to look at the assessment protocol and read it in a particular way. Um, you're gonna read with, uh, for instance, with my ability to talk with friends, I am satisfied, somewhat satisfied, somewhat dissatisfied, or dissatisfied, and then place a check mark in the column uh, next to your answer. And again, this is just gonna add that, that fine detail so I can really understand where you're at with um, your disfluency. All right, Michael, so this is our very last assessment protocol that I'm gonna be having you fill out. Uh, in this assessment, we'll be uh, focusing on any types of behaviors that you may have developed due to your disfluency. So uh, think about times that you, um, instead of you know, uh, using your language to speak because you felt that you may be triggered and you might have that hurried speech, that uh, you gestured, like you pointed to an object rather than actually asking for it. So those are behaviors that essentially are going to kind of get in the way of your day-to-day -day life had you had not 
dealt with this disfluency. So in this one, uh, you're gonna be, it's, it's a rating scale, so you're gonna be rating each uh, thing, question asked as uh, zero is a behavior that's not avoided, one is an a behavior that, you're, that you infrequently avoid, and two would be a frequently avoided behavior. And again, this goes back and adds that insight. So if you can uh, answer, to, answer these to the best of your ability, that would greatly help me. So Michael, I just wanna thank you so much for taking the time to really sit here and uh, truly give me some great insight into um, what, you're going, what you've been dealing with. And um, it's going to all be very helpful for me going forward. Um, you know, and I, before, at the end of my interview, I'd like to summarize some of the points, uh, major points that you did mention that I wrote down from our conversation. Um, you initially didn't think you had a problem until your wife made you aware through a recorded conversation that there was a hurried speech and um, you're, you did say that you wanted to slow down that rate of speech and essentially gain a little more mindfulness when speaking. Uh, to your conversational partners, in particular your family members, um, and that you did notice that you will say I, I, I when you initiate um, conversations sometimes, and your wife did mention again to you that, that was something that you noticed that you do, um, and that you did notice from the video, and that you do speak better or more fluently under pressure um, or high stress situations, um, but when you read out loud, like from your son's uh, nursery rhyme book, that essentially the rhythm is is, is a little difficult for you to, to follow. So you end up having the disfluency um, and that you've had negative reactions in the past from family members because you've, you, you just can't get your point across. It's difficult to have a conversation when uh, you essentially can't even get a word in because people keep cutting you off to tell you how quickly you're speaking. Um, so, uh, as far as how, what you want out of treatment, you want to slow down that rate of speech, get that mindfulness, and improve your communication with others, and I think that that's something that we can help you with. Thank you.